Come, all ye faithful, and all we who are not so faithful. Come, you who enter this space frequently and not so frequently. Come to join the revolution, ushered in by an infant born low. To witness the mighty ruler brought forth in a stable. To encounter the warrior of peace entering the world in dirt and darkness. Tonight, we await the event that happened so long ago. We recall the birth of our Messiah, and we hear our call to follow. In long days of strife, struggle, and solitude, we remember the divine presence that has been with us since the dawn of time. Good evening, and Merry Christmas. My name is Tom O'Brien, and I am blessed to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. I welcome you this evening on behalf of Stephanie Dozois and Rachel Williams and Bolin, and Diane Burke, and everyone who has played a part in helping this service come to fruition. This is a Christmas like no other, uh, in a year like no other, we all wish that we could be together in the sanctuary. We all wish that we could be physically together. But fortunately, we can still be spiritually together. This time is still a time to find peace and to find joy, to revel in the love of our God known to us through Jesus Christ and through this wonderful church community. So welcome. No matter who you are, no matter where you are physically or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. O come all ye faithful, and ye who are not so faithful, let's worship God.
singer, Arlo Guthrie, once said, you can't have a light without a dark to stick it in. We see most clearly the fullness of the incarnation when we are in communion with the brokenness that surrounds us. That God took on human flesh is most miraculous when we consider our own frailty. In this darkness and holiest time of year, may we embody God's presence in the world. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. The Christ child is about to be born, the one promised by the angel. Mary's fullness of time has arrived, except that the birth is scheduled according to the emperor. A decree went out that all should be numbered. Caesar decreed a census, everyone counted. Caesar intended to have up-to-date data for the tax rolls. Caesar intended to have current lists of draft eligibility. Caesar intended taxes to support armies because the emperor, in whatever area, is always about money and power, about power and force, about force and control and eventually violence. And while we wait for the Christ child, we are enthralled by the things of Caesar, money, power, control, and all the well-being that comes from such control, even if it requires a little violence. But in the midst of the decree will come this long-expected Jesus, innocent, vulnerable, full of grace and truth, grace and not power, truth and not money, mercy and not control. We also dwell in the land of Caesar. O oh God, we pray for the gift of your spirit that we may loosen our grip on the things of Caesar, that we may turn our eyes toward the baby, our ears toward the newness, our hearts towards the gentleness, our power and money and control toward your new governance. We crave the newness. And while the decree of the emperor rings in our ears with such authority, give us the newness that we may start again at the beginning, that the innocence of the baby may intrude upon our ambiguity, that the vulnerability of the child may veto our lust for control, that we may be filled with wonder and so less of anxiety. In the blessed name of the baby we pray, amen. When we gather together in worship, we renew our promises to God and one another. Words that guide us on our path. If these words are unfamiliar to you, please feel free to listen. Please join me now as we recite together the covenant of Memorial Congregational Church. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humanity. And as the Lord's free people, we agree to walk together in all God's ways, made known or to be made known to us.
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee and Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. <laughs>
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at the, what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. please pray with me. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In 2012, I wrote a sermon for the Sunday following Christmas, and I've continued to use it for most of the last eight years. It was a poem based on Twas the Night Before Christmas, and it begins by poking fun at the usually low attendance in church on that Sunday. Twas the Sunday after Christmas, and the pews were all bare. Well, this year, those words hit a little bit harder. They sit a little bit heavier. We haven't been able to worship together in person since March, about 37 Sundays by my count. I confess that I've started to get used to the new rhythms of worship planning and sharing the services virtually. In fact, I believe that one of the positive effects of this year has been the ways that we and other churches are learning new ways to be church, even when we are scattered apart. For a long time, some have complained that churches have become too much about what goes on inside of the building, instead of rec recognizing that Christians are called to leave the building, to go out into the world and make a difference. There's a comic that I saw a few years ago that it's a picture of Jesus receiving a little church for Christmas. And somebody asks how it is or how he likes it. And Jesus says, well, I can't figure out how to get it out of the box. So virtual worship helps us rem remember that we're called to come out of the box, that, that church isn't just a building. But this is hard. 
We don't get to worship together on Christmas Eve, and, and that leaves an empty space in our heart. This season that's typically defined by joy is increasingly defined by grief. So we have churches with empty pews and homes with empty tables and living rooms where families would usually gather, finding themselves empty. Empty because of the quarantine and also empty because we've lost so many this year. These are difficult times. These are times of struggle. Of course, Mary and Joseph knew difficult times. Not only while they were searching for a place to give birth to a child, but in the days and the years that followed. They knew the difficult times that many families do. They felt the concern about keeping their child fed and cared for and in a bed and and all of that is in considering the divine nature of this child. But this darkest night is part of the darkest yet holiest season. These times are scary, and we may be afraid of the dark, but God is not. Darkness is a creative space for God. Out of the darkness, God created everything that is including light. The darkness of uncertainty leads to the darkness of the manger and the darkness of the womb. On this darkest night, Christmas still comes. Jesus still shows up. During this frightening year, we've, while we've had to avoid gathering within these walls, we have remained a church even though we have been scattered. I've seen Christmas throughout this year. I've seen Christmas all over our community. Christmas keeps showing up at MCC. Since this pandemic and quarantine has begun, I've witnessed God at work. As I see others simply protecting each other by staying away and social distancing, I've seen so many sacrifice the comforts that we are used to to make sure that we can protect others. I've witnessed so many folks in the church and folks in town checking in with each other, making sure that people are okay. Your deacons here at MCC continue to hold the spiritual care and well-being of this church close to their hearts and have done everything they can to continue to reach out and make sure that everyone is cared for. And some of you, many of you maybe, have received some deliveries by the Brownie Ferry who has gone and visited so many and brought joy with a simple gift, a simple treat. Thank you, Bobby. I have witnessed God at work, working with a staff that has leaned into changes, that from almost day one has right away said, okay, so things are changing. How do we continue to bring church to our community? And I've felt God in the care that this congregation has shown for each other and for the staff. We continue to gather virtually on Zoom, offering advice and support and connection, always asking how we can help those who need it. And I know that there are countless other ways that God has been at work, that God has shown up at MCC. And God's work is evident in the miracle of science and the work of doctors and nurses and caregivers in the essential workers who keep us fed and warm and safe. But Christmas also shows up in the repeated calls for justice, that we treat these essential workers with the same love and care as they treat us, that they get paid reasonably, living wages, and that we do our part so that doctors and nurses and hospitals aren't overrun. Christmas 
shows up because of the ways that you witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ by showing love and justice and care for all of God's creation. Christmas shows up because of the ways that we work together. I know it's not the same as being here. It's not the same as listening and praying and singing together. But beyond these walls, we continue to be the church, amplifying the good news that hope survives, that peace is possible, that we can all rejoice in God's creation, and that love will always win out. The pews may be empty this year, but the church is thriving. There will be another time when we are together again in this building. And we will continue to be the church outside of these walls. Because no matter what, Christmas still comes. Jesus still shows up. Twas the night before Christmas. And though we are scattered, our spirits are joined and focused on what really matters. This Christmas Eve in church and inside our hearts, the nativity story is simply the start. The story continues. Our God is still speaking. And that baby born low, it's now us that he's seeking. To head out to the world and to live the good news, to put on our coats and our scarves and our shoes, and to let the world know that God loves us all, the old and the young and the short and the tall, the hungry and thirsty, the sick and the poor, LGBTQ and straight and oh, so many more. See, the story of Christmas, sometimes lost in distraction, is that God holds us close and God calls us to action. On this night before Christmas, we'll consider God's gifts and we'll think of the challenges, the calls, and the shifts, our shifting perspectives about how we live, our call to help others, challenged to forgive. We'll remember that this tiny, stable-born child, this holy infant so tender and mild, didn't grow up to live a life of frivolity. He lifted up others. He fought inequality. He fed the hungry, spent time with the outcasts, preached a gospel about God that continues to last. So let's not focus on all these empty pews. This Christmas season, let's all take time to muse about God's wonderful gift to the world that is you and realize all the powerful things you can do to play an active part in the world God created. Because of your work, thirst can be slated and bellies be filled and the naked be dressed and the sick will be nursed and prisoners feel blessed. So may God be with you till we meet again. Merry Christmas to all. Can I get an amen?
The Cross in the Manger by Ann Weems. If there is no cross in the manger, there is no Christmas. If the babe doesn't become an adult, there is no Bethlehem star. If there is no commitment in us, there are no wise men searching. If we offer no cup of cold water, there is no gold, no frankincense, no myrrh. If there is no praising God's name, there are no angels singing. If there is no spirit of hallelujah, there are no shepherds watching. If there is no standing up, no speaking out, no risk, there is no Herod, no flight into Egypt. If there is no room in our inn, then Merry Christmas mocks the Christ child and the Holy Family is just a holiday card and God will loathe our feasts and festivals. For if there is no reconciliation, we cannot call Christ the Prince of Peace. If there is no goodwill towards others, it can all be packed away in boxes for another year. If there is no forgiveness in us, there is no cause for celebration. If we cannot go even now into Golgotha, there is no Christmas in us. If Christmas is not now, if Christ is not born into the everyday present, then what is all this noise about? What can I offer, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise one, I would do my part. What can I offer? All my heart. As we open our purses and our pockets, may the gifts we bring be in proportion to the gratitude of our hearts at Christ's birth. Your offering will be safely received with gratitude through one of the many options at mcc.org backsplash donate or by checks sent to the church. We thank you for all, all of the ways that you support the ministries of MCC. shared, a young maiden will bear a child and she will name him Jesus. All is calm and all is bright. Christ the Savior is born. But that's only the beginning of the story. A story that has not yet ended. A story that includes us. A story of which we are a part. So we go out to live the story, to tell of the hope that is being born among us this Christmas, to share the love of the season with the world, to be agents of peace in times of trouble, 
to sing songs of deep and abiding joy. As we go into this silent night, may God go with us, challenging us to respond to God's call in ways that are new, unexpected, and sometimes a little unsettling. May the Lord bless you as you walk the way of Christ Jesus in thought, word, and deed. May Christ's life be yours now and always. And may God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Oh.